Hi my friends, welcome to Stories with Tori today. You know the drill, get your fingers out and let's review the signs we know. What is this one? Hello, lamp, mistake, fish, yarn, happy, Halloween, trick or treat, paint, glue, cat, Happy Thanksgiving Imagination Llama Christmas Happy New Year Lion Kindness Emergency Valentine's Monster Planet Unicorn, Narwhal, Butterfly, Frog, Easter, Flower, Music, Stick, remember this one, Wish, and this week there are two awesome holidays. Can you tell by my little hello what Wednesday is? Wednesday is Happy Cinco de Mayo. And in order to sign Cinco de Mayo, you have to spell out the whole word. So we're not going to do that, but we're going to sign celebration. So go like this with your fingers, kind of put it by and do two big circles like you're celebrating. We're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. And with that said, there's a hilarious book because part of their celebration is eating good food like tacos. The sign for tacos go like this. You do it twice, and it looks like tacos. So we're going to read this book. This is a taco, not a squirrel. This is a taco. This book is good. Written by Andrew Canagalos and illustrated by John Shipley. This is a squirrel, but he put taco. Hey. Need a squirrel for your book? I work for peanuts, but I prefer tacos. This is a squirrel. Hi, my name is Taco, because my favorite food is tacos. I'm really excited to be in this book. I can't wait to help you learn all about squirrels like me. So this is an informational book. Squirrels are some of the cleanest rodents in the wild. They are known for having silky soft fur. Gotta give credit to my pal, Prairie Dog Pal, Garbage. He's my stylist. Hi, my name is Garbage, because my favorite food is Save It For A Prairie Dog Book. This book's about squirrels. Squirrels love to eat nuts, acorns, and even tree bark. Tree bark? I was told there'd be tacos. It's kind of the main reason I agreed to be in this book. Squirrels can pack large amounts of food into their cheeks to transport back to their nests. These aren't uh, tacos either. Squirrels can rotate their ankles completely backwards. This allows them to climb in any direction. You see his ankles? Ah! Squirrels are great tree climbers and love to jump from branch to branch. I'm scared of heights. I live in a bush. Some squirrels called flying squirrels can glide through the air for distances over 150 feet. You've got the wrong squirrel! My cousin Barry is a flyer in the family! Ah! People, is he a flying squirrel? Then they glide gently to the ground for a graceful landing. Wham! <laughs> the hawk is the natural predator of squirrels, swooping down from the air to swipe them right off the ground. Uh, uh oh. See what's coming? See him right there? Lightning behind the background. The hawk is a, whoa, timeout. This book needs fewer hawks and way more tacos. And when I say fewer hawks, I mean zero. See the shadow coming? Uh-oh. The, and he crosses it out. Here comes the hawk. Think he's going to get him? Crossed him out. Poof. Oh. <gasps> That was awesome. I wonder. 
The taco is the natural predator of tacos, swooping down from the air to swipe them right off the ground. Ha ha ha! Now that's more like it. Did he change the predator? Yes, to tacos, right? Taco hungry for taco soup time. Who invited this guy? Hey, salsa breath, you're in the wrong book. Why is the tacos? Right? He put the taco as the predator of the tacos. Think he'll change it? A giant taco? Sheesh. He's lucky I have a rule about eating things with faces. Taco the squirrel, and not an actual talking giant talking taco, is the natural predator of tacos. Now that's what I'm talking about. Squirrels are great eaters and can eat their total body weight in tacos in just a day. Kids, remember, if you want tacos in your story, then you make sure there are tacos in your story. What else did he put in his story? Can you imagine walking through the woods and there's a taco truck? Don't you love it? I love this book. It is Happy Tacos, right? Okay, so... That is our Wednesday holiday, is Happy Cinco de Mayo, right? We celebrate and make sure you eat tacos. But on Tuesday is also a fantastic holiday. It's one of my favorites. It's Star Wars Day, May the 4th be with you. So on Tuesday, make sure you get the four, and you have to put it over like May the 4th be with you, because it sounds like the force, get it? So Star Wars, you go like this with two fingers, and you're going to point to all the stars. So you're going to point to all the stars in the sky. And war, your hands are kind of going to war against each other. So Star Wars. And the next little part is taken from our also amazing books, Darth Vader and Sun. And there's a whole series of these, Darth Vader and Friends, Darth Vader and Princess, so I love these books. They're written and illustrated by Jeffrey Brown. And they're hilarious in the sense of Darth Vader, the ultimate bad guy. What would he be like as a dad? So I took some of the pictures from this book. And so these are from the book. I love this. Luke, come with me. Why? Because it is the only way. Why? Because. Because why? Can you imagine having this conversation with Darth Vader? And I love this. Use the fork, Luke. See what he's doing with his hands. And I love this one. Together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. And then can I have a treat? <laughs> and I love this one. Imagine being in space going light speed in a TIE fighter. Are we there yet? Not yet. And I love this. He's trying to use the force again on Luke. This isn't the toy you're looking for. I uh, yes it is. And I love this. Can you imagine having a bedtime story re read by Darth Vader? And then Darth Maul leapt up and destroyed Qui Gon. I love his eyes are like, uh, might be a little scary. Just drop me at the corner. It's okay, I can take you right to the front door. Ugh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't know about you, but if I was dropped off to school in this thing, I would not be embarrassed. I'd be like, you guys, did you just see what I just got dropped off in? This would be amazing. I would not be embarrassed about that. This one's funny. Uh, is that a good guy or a bad guy? A uh, good guy. He looks like a bad guy. Well, he's a good guy. <gasps> Draw more good guys, people. Is this guy a good guy or a bad guy? He is definitely a bad guy. Good job, you guys, turning in your wonders. I'm getting them from your teachers, and I'm slowly answering them. I wish I could answer all of them and have a 1,000 wonders answered a week, but um, I am getting them, so keep in check, and we will be answering your wonders soon. With that said, let's get right on to our wonders. The first one is, I wonder what was the very first video game? This was in October of 1958. A physicist by the name of William Higginbotham created what is thought to be the very first video game ever. 
Now I was surprised by this because I am familiar with a video game Pong and it's tennis also and there's two lines that go up and down. But even before that in 1958 was this game. As you can see there's kind of a like where the tennis net would be and then you can kind of control where the ball goes. And this was, as we know, the very first video game ever invented. Kind of crazy how far video games have come. I wonder what is the biggest snake in the world. So this is as of today. Um, it's called the Reticulated Python. And in 1912 in the United Kingdom, there was a 20 foot 6 inch python. And so what I'm showing you is just regularly how big they can get. But believe it or not, there is a zoo and there is a record length is 32 feet, 9.5 inches, and this is it. So if you guys at home have a yardstick like this and a yardstick gets up to 36 inches, this is three feet. And I want you at home, go find a yardstick and go measure out 32 feet. That's 10 of these and then two more extra feet. This thing was huge, is huge, it's crazy. Oh, I don't know if I would like standing next to that. Our third wonder of the week is awesome. Why do we celebrate Cinco de Mayo? What is Cinco de Mayo? I found this very short one minute video that explains the history of Cinco de Mayo. And I love stories like this. I love a good underdog story and that's what Cinco de Mayo is. So we're going to watch this and I hope you enjoy it. Cinco de Mayo in English means the 5th of May. That's the day in 1862 when the Mexican army won a surprising victory over the French at the Battle of Puebla. They were outnumbered nearly 2 to 1. Many people think Cinco de Mayo celebrates Mexican independence, but that's not actually true. Mexico had been independent from Spain since 1810, but was unable to pay its debts to Europe. France saw an opportunity to move in and claim territory. 6,000 French troops set out to attack Puebla, a small town in eastern Mexico. But an underdog force of about 2,000 loyal Mexicans defeated them. Their heroism was a source of great pride for the people of Mexico. Today, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated more in the U.S. than it is in Mexico, especially in areas with large Mexican-American populations, like Los Angeles and Chicago. It is celebrated with Mexican food, mariachi music, dancing, and other special customs. Cinco de Mayo honors the strength and courage of the Mexican people at the Battle of Puebla, and a victory that seemed impossible. Have you ever overcome an obstacle that made you want to celebrate? Love that story. Okay, I hope you are having fun. Go and read a book about celebrations or about a good Star Wars book. I hope you are having fun. Keep on reading and have a great day. Bye guys.